Hey, Rooted family. Man, it's so good to be with you uh, today here at your meeting. I know some of you are meeting on during the week and some of you guys are watching this on Sundays. I know my Rooted group, you guys are watching this now. And um, I was hopeful to be with you in person to talk about this week's content uh, about tithe and generosity and just to share with you a little bit from my own heart and my own journey as a follower of Jesus. And um, unfortunately, with all the stuff going on with my dad, and I'm so grateful um, for you all just praying for us and uh, being with us and uh, that I could do this on video and be able to share my heart with you even though I can't be with you in person. I hope your Rooted experience has just been uh, fantastic so far. I know our group have just enjoyed so much connecting with you and uh, I've heard reports from your other groups about how you're just connecting together and how God has just been moving and working. My prayer is that your experience has been the same as it was in my own life, and I know Heather's uh, life as well, where we just found community and deep community with others and um, just heard and watched as God worked and moved in each of our lives together and how we become a part of one another's story. And uh, that's really what Rooted is all about. And to be honest, that's really what um, being a Jesus community is all about. And the content of this week uh, is no different from that. I, I want to talk to you just a little bit about uh, my own journey with generosity. As you uh, kind of walk through uh, this week's Rooted study, you were talking or, or reading and studying about what God has to say about our money what God has to say about our resources and um, what it means to be people of generosity. And I kind of wanted to just take a step back because I know oftentimes um, for people that I encounter, there's a lot of just confusion, a lot of different understandings about tithe and giving and all this kind of stuff. And we really want to just have a conversation about, number one, what, what has God done in my own life concerning my money uh, and tithing and relationship to what God is doing in my life. But kind of just give us a perspective and for you to know, um, really here at the point, what we believe God is calling us to in terms of generosity. I think to get our, our heads kind of back, in, uh, like reoriented to what God has to say, uh, I want to just jump you back uh, to the Old Testament. And there's a book, um, it was a, a guy, he was a prophet in the Old Testament, his name was Malachi. And he talks um, specifically about this very thing, generosity, but from a, a different perspective, and I think it will help set the stage for some of the things that Jesus tells us in the future that I think really will help, and my prayer is, will give you a new vision, a new understanding for what God um, has to say about our money, and really that it's much more holistic than us just giving money to the church, or us just tithing a percentage of our income. So we jump all the way back, and I'll just give you a little summary from the book of Malachi. You can go read it on your own if you like sometime. But in Malachi 1, as with most of the prophets, God told Malachi, hey, I got a beef with my people. <laughs> Basically, that's the short of it. The Israelite people were kind of wandering away and, and doing things their own way. Really what humans have done since the beginning of time, try to be God instead of like letting God be God, right? And say, and Malachi was talking specifically about them. It says in verse 6 of chapter 1, I'll read it to you. It says, a son honors his father and a slave honors his master. If I am a father, this is God speaking through Malachi to the people of Israel. If I am the father, where is the honor due me? If I am a master, where is the respect due me, says the Lord Almighty goes on to say in verse 14 of chapter 1, cursed is the cheat who has an acceptable male in his flock and vows not to give it. Like, what's that about? What do you mean a male? We'll talk about it. But then sacrifices a blemished animal to the Lord. The, the people of Israel had a little bit of a problem going on where they were offering sacrifices to God that were less than he deserved. So they were basically what was going on is they were they were holding back some for themselves or the best for themselves and giving to God the least or giving to God less than he deserved for the honor of who he was. And it, and f for our perspective today, like what we need to know is that Israel had a problem and God speaks to them directly about this issue in their hearts of them keeping for themselves the best or deciding for themselves what they would give to God, really trying to be in control of the resources that they had. Now, if we jump forward hundreds of years, that kind of speak, those are harsh words for us, right? If we talk about it in context of what does it mean to give God tithe, like to give a percentage of our, our giving. Actually, the, that 10% number, if you've ever heard that, actually comes from uh, Malachi chapter 3, we're going to read in a second. But sometimes we just take that verse out of context and think just blank, eh, we got to give God 10%. And if we don't, like in chapter 1, he's going to be mad at us like the people of Israel. 
But I wanted to dig a little deeper. Why was God upset with the, the Israelites? Was it because he they weren't giving him what he wanted? Or maybe there's something deeper was going on. If we read along, it, it, we jump over to chapter 3, um, and the people of Israel kind of hear this word, and they say to God, like, we, don't, we want to change. We want to go back to our best life, basically. And it says, God says to them, but you ask, how are we to return back to being in right relationship with you? And God jumps down, and he says, in tithes and offerings, you are under a curse. That means you're not living your best. Your whole nation, because you are robbing me, he says. And then in verse 10 of chapter 3, he says, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will be not enough room to store it. He says in verse 11, I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it's ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. It's interesting in the ancient world, we get this language of tithe and we just think immediately our pocketbooks are our checkbooks. But in the ancient world, tithe was more than money. And the reason for the tithe that says that will bring the, the tithe into the storehouses. So imagine for yourself, the people of Israel, they were centered around the tabernacle where the priests resided, the sacrifices were made. And within the tabernacle, there would have been vast storehouses where the people of Israel would give a portion, a tithe of their harvests or their earnings or their their flocks and and what that tithe did was it provided a communal resource this is really important the the tithe yes it was an offering to god but it was them saying god you are a provider for all of us and what we're going to do is you're calling us to return what you've given to us a portion of what you've given to us so that we can participate in the community being provided for all together, that each one of us is going to take on ourselves the responsibility to be a part of the whole. Later on in the New Testament, the Apostle Paul in Ephesians talks about this so specifically. He says, man, there's all kinds of parts of the body. There's noses and eyes and ears and hairs and shoulders and, and all of them function in the body to do their own part uh, so that each one would do its part, it says at the end of Ephesians chapter 4. And this gives us a picture of what God calls us to as people who are part of something bigger than ourselves. We're part of a body, a community, where the tithe in the ancient world was not just about writing a check. Uh, and it wasn't just about your money or their money. It was God's invitation from, for them to move from being owners to being stewards of kingdom resources. And to be a steward meant that you managed what was given to you for the greater good of someone else, right? As we steward what God has given us, this is an invitation to come and live in to the kingdom. Later on, Jesus would have this interaction with a, a wealthy man. If, maybe you've read the story. And the wealthy guy comes up and says, man, I've studied what it means to have eternal life. I've done all the things. Tell me what I must do to like put the, you know, the, the cherry on the top and have eternal life. And Jesus looks at him and he says, well, here's what you do. Go sell everything you have. Give it to the poor and then come and follow me. And he, cause he knew and Jesus and, and like it kind of dispels the myth that our tithe is really about 10%. Because in this instance, Jesus says, sell everything, like give everything you have. But what was going on underneath the surface with that wealthy man and with us, I believe today, is that Jesus was saying, you are an owner. And he calls us to account when we believe wrongly that what we have is ours. And that feels harsh at first, but really God invites us to be set free from the bondage because when we believe that we own things, that they're ours, then we have the posture of we have to be God in our lives and orchestrate and dictate where things go and receive the pressure of, of and the weight of having enough. And then all of a sudden we're afraid of not having enough and we end up hoarding and keeping for ourselves. It will, it's what inevitably happens with all humans when they get out of place in their relationship with God. And the tithe and generosity is not just about giving. And it's not really even just about God, giving God control of, you, of the money that you have. What God desires for us, I believe, is to have a reorientation of our minds, to move from thinking that we're owners to believing the truth that we're stewards, that everything we have has been given to us. And God says, and as you steward those resources, I want you to return to me, return to the kingdom 
a portion of those resources so that the kingdom can flourish, so that people who are in need around you, can their needs can be met, so that people who are hurting around you, uh, they can be healed, and so that we, you, I, me, us, together, can experience what our best life that's experienced when we give to others who are in need. To, to remove ourselves from this kind of obligatory response of like, oh, I got to give, otherwise God will curse me, you know? No, but the, the joyous invitation that God gives you for generosity, to, generosity today is to experience your best life. It's one where you're not under control or you're not in control of your money and your money is not in control of you where you know and live and rest in the truth that God is the provider in your life, not your own ability to acquire wealth or to acquire resources. God is your provider. And as you live into the kingdom, there's moments when you have less and the kingdom, the body of Christ, provides for you. And there's moments when others have less and God provides for them through you and me and the rest of the body of Christ. It's this communal experience that God invites us to to bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. Imagine what it would look like if we as Jesus followers here at the point would commit to rethinking generosity. And and even from the perspective that generosity isn't about you at all, it's about someone else who's in need. Imagine what our community might look like if we read in Acts chapter 2 when the Holy Spirit came and everybody gave, it says, to those who had need, right? So people were doing what God commanded them to do to bring, they bring, they brought the whole tithe into the storehouse. And when there were people in need, their needs were met. And people had the joy of meeting those needs in this beautiful body, this beautiful communal reality that was the kingdom of heaven coming to earth, the way Jesus teaches us to pray. Imagine what might happen if we got serious about being the community of faith. If we got serious with one another, even in our rooted groups, where we knew each other well enough to know who has need and who has abundance and that God brings both of those things together so that we can all live our best life in giving and receiving and stewarding and returning. This is a vision that I believe God wants us to catch on to as the people of the point. So our challenge uh, this week as we have journeyed through Rooted is to ask ourselves the question. And my challenge to you is to ask yourself the question, what is your perspective on generosity? What is your perspective on returning to God? What he calls you to return to him for the good of his kingdom? Maybe for you, you have never let go of control of your money, your money. Maybe today God wants to strike straight to your heart and speak to you and say, it is not yours, that it's his. And what would it look like for you to surrender control of the money that God has placed in your care? Maybe for you today, you've been a, a consistent giver for a long time. Uh, a, a cons- and we're going to change our language. Maybe you've been a consistent returner for a long time, that you've been bringing the tithe into the storehouse for the good of the kingdom. But maybe it's become obligation to you, or or maybe it's become so routine that you don't even think about it. I love a story um, that John Wesley shared. He's one of my favorite theologians. You can go read about him. But he talks about generosity in his own life. And he said every year, uh, he began at 10%, but God was like speaking to his heart and saying, "Um, John, this this is something that you don't even notice anymore. And so God challenged his heart to give 1% more each year. And John shared in some of his writings that by the end of his life, he had uh, his giving, his generosity, or his returning had flip-flopped. And he was living on 10%, and he was returning to God 90% of his earnings. And God was, and he speaks of his life and uh, such a profound abundance living in that ratio as opposed to giving 10% and living off 90. I think it's, a, it's just deeply challenging because it's not about the amount you give, it's about our posture towards God and others. Maybe for you, returning uh, to God, tithing has become routine. And you need to instill a little connection to the reality that is your money or what you have and what God has given you to steward, is it under God's control? Is he speaking into your life about what you give? Maybe today you would pray uh, in whatever situation you're in, you would pray about taking a next step. Um, What is that? What are those next steps? Number one, maybe you pray about beginning to think about being a steward instead of an owner and you would commit today 
I would challenge you, talk about this in your groups, make a commitment to your group, if God is pressing in on you, to begin returning to him, whatever that looks like for you. Maybe 10% seems overwhelming. You know, maybe maybe you need to do 50% today. I don't know what the Lord would ask him, God, what do you want me to begin with in my step towards being a steward and not an owner? Maybe today you want to begin to bring the tithe into the storehouse. Or maybe today you're a consistent returner and you need to pray and say, God, um, I'm in control. Tell me, what do I need to return to you? Maybe there's a different need that God wants to speak into your life. I believe this is what God is calling us to, to have a new vision of generosity, a new vision of a community of faith where there is no one in need, that God provides for all because of this communal existence that he calls us to. Man, thanks so much for giving me some time to just share my own heart. about. And God is continuing to speak in Heather and I's life about our own financial journey and continually challenges me to be thinking John, are you a steward or an owner right now? Uh, and making my resources available or the resources you've given me available to his kingdom and his purposes. And in the end, when that's our posture with God, I believe he will always lead us to our best life. Thank you so much uh, for allowing, again, me to have time to share with you about this topic. And just know that I'll, I will be praying that God would continue to stir your heart, lead you to deeper connections with him, uh, and lead you to deeper connection with one another as we endeavor to follow Jesus with everything that we are. Let me say a word of prayer over you. Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this call that you've placed upon our lives to return what you've given to us, God, that we are just stewards of these kingdom resources that the world might be provided for, that people around us who are hurting might be healed, who are experiencing loss or an absence, God, that we might present to them the kingdom resources that would bring them life and abundance and provision. God, that we're all a part of that together. Help us to live in community where we are sharing life authentically enough to share our need and to share our abundance with those around us. God, would you continue doing that work in these folks as they journey together uh, towards their best life with you and one another. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.